In my last video, I created 13 tips that are quality of life tips for your stream deck. If you're a stream deck owner, check the video out. You'll really find that video useful. It's a great video. One of the tips was all about how you can create a facial cam zoom on the stream deck. And I wasn't very happy or content with the way I described it in that video. And also I didn't cover Streamlabs users or even more than one real technique for that. And actually the technique that I covered just wasn't the best technique as well. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering three different techniques that you can use in OBS Studio and two techniques that you can use in OBS Studio and Streamlabs for doing a facial cam zoom feature and right back out again. Some massive streamers, for example, Limmy, use this to brilliant effect. Whenever there's some stupid point that he's making on stream or there's something he wants to emphasize, he will zoom into the camera right into his face and then zoom right back out again. I'm not sure how Limmy does it on his stream or how other people do it on their stream, but I'm going to show you three different ways of doing it now. As always, if you find this useful, please hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're not already and let's go. First up, a quick word from my sponsors. Owned.pro was a plugin specifically for OBS Studio. You literally install this, and from there, you can install one click overlays from Owned.pro. You can install alerts from Owned Pro. It's a really, really good tool. I've tried this out myself. I absolutely love it myself, and I'm sure you'll like it too. And the best part is, if you use Code Machine at checkout when you take out a pro subscription with Owned Pro, you'll get 50% off. The subscription cost. You'll also be supporting the channel, so that's a thanks from me, and hopefully you enjoy it. Check out own.pro and let me know how you get on. Okay, so the way that I'm going to structure this is I'm going to start with the easiest method and show you how you can program that into your stream deck. Although I'm not going to be covering Touch Portal, Streamerbot, Leoran Board, Sammy, all of the other methods because I use the stream deck. As I progress, I'm going to get more and more complicated with the techniques. But the caveat here is, and why you need to stick with me, is that the more complicated the techniques, the nicer and smoother and more flexibility you get with the solutions. But once again, two of these methods, the first two methods you can do on Streamlabs OBS because it doesn't require any plugins at all. Method one is the simplest of methods and all it requires is you having some sort of scene set up separately and then you would have a source which would be your camera source and you would have it set up twice. One version of it would be much larger. So we've literally resized this to be a much larger. And then when we make that disappear, that top layer there is the zoom layer. The bottom layer is the normal layer. Now, I'm just using just a crappy Logitech camera that I've got here to illustrate this really well. Simply, all we're then needing to do is activate a source to do the zoom and then deactivate that same source. And then all we need to do is add this test camera here as the cam to your normal webcam sources. So this would use scene nesting and I've got a video all about scene nesting if you're not really seeing the value of it. Check the card in the corner and the description below for scene nesting. But basically you can use this as your base raw camera instead of the raw camera asset itself. So then you've got basically like a built-in zoom function before you even add all of your camera overlays and text and all the other stuff that you would add. This is a really simple method but as you can see it jumps straight away from that to that. There's no transition, it's not smooth, it's kind of raw. That is method one in its simplest form. It's dead easy and quick to set up. You can literally do that in one minute. You can do that on Streamlabs, you can do that on OBS Studio, you can do it on XSplit, you can do it on any of the different broadcasting softwares. So if you want things simple, stick with method one. Now method two is a little bit more complicated. We do get the same effect in terms of a zoom function, but actually it's a smoother zoom in and a smoother zoom out and you can control that transition. And here we're using a scene change. We're basically gonna change change from one scene containing the camera to a different scene containing a zoomed in version of that camera. And it's the transition between those that gives us the control over how smooth that is and what that looks like. Now, if you're using Streamlabs, I did a video ages ago, back when I was really rubbish at making YouTube videos. I'll leave it on the card. That will show you all about how you can do stinger transitions and normal transitions. It will help you do this effect. I'm now going to illustrate within OBS Studio how the transition works. And it does require a plugin, which is called OBS move transition. OBS move transition, and I'll link it in the description below. It just enables more complexity around moving scenes and sources and transitions within OBS Studio. Now, once you've got move transition installed, you get a lot more different options here with scene transitions. If you don't see scene transitions here, we just want to go to docs and you want to make sure that scene transitions is visible on your OBS Studio. Now, at this point, we can have a global transition within OBS Studio, but we can also have transition overrides. 
And what that means is we can have a transition that applies to all of our scenes, however which way they would connect to each other. Or if you wanted tr a transition for a specific scene, then you can customize a specific transition. And the way you would do this, we would simply click on this down, click add, and then you would add the type of transition that you want to add. Let's say, for example, we wanted to add a move transition. We would give it a name, test transition. And at this point, we can then design what we want that transition between scene A and scene B to look like. Now, one quick tip here, if you click this contains the other source name, any matching sources within scene A and scene B, they will match and basically they won't disappear and reappear. They will stay on the scene and they will move around the scene. Nice and swishy, really professional looking. But here we can just customize that transition, different types of transitions, for example, stingers and things like that you can add. Now, the one I'm interested in here is the ease in and ease out because I want to ease in the zoom and ease out the zoom again from scene one to scene two. Now, what we can also do here is set the duration of that transition. Now, if you want like a quick transition to the next scene, you would set these milliseconds to be a lot lower. For example, 300 milliseconds will be like one third of a second. Now, something that you could do if you wanted to have a specific transition is we could right click on the scene that you want that new transition to apply to. And if you don't want the global transitions to apply to it, you can have a transition override with this plugin inside of OBS Studio. And then we could just select, in this case, we could have selected the test transition that I just set up. But I've already deleted it. You get the picture. We can set up a specific transition override. Now, all that's left to do now that we have a zoomed out version of the webcam and the zoomed in version of the webcam is transition from scene one to scene two. And that will happen and then back again. Now we can see scene one just contains the Logitech here. Ignore that one there. That's just an example from the first technique that I showed you. So it's just a simple camera that you've got in scene one, a camera that you've got in scene two, but we've stretched it out and the scene transition does the animation for that. It handles all of it. Now simply all you have to do, program something into your stream deck that will just change scenes. The problem with doing that is that there's a little bit less flexibility because it relies on a, ch a change of scene. So that's technique two. I'm sure you'll agree here a little bit nicer than the first technique there. Zooming in and zooming out again. The first technique looked a little bit like this, a little bit more snappy. For technique three, we're gonna be using the exact same plugin inside of OBS Studio. This technique does not apply to Streamlabs OBS because it has to use that plugin. Whereas Streamlabs does already have some sort of transition function built into it, a little bit like I just showed. Now to set this technique up, we're first going to need to set up a new scene. I'm going to call this test cam move transition. And this is just a basic scene. All it has contained in it is the camera itself, which is full screen and it's not zoomed in at all. Now we have a scene with the raw source inside of it. Think about what this means here. The Logitech raw source is inside of this scene, but the scene itself can be edited without affecting that original source. So if I were to add that Logitech camera somewhere else, you can see here there are no filters except for some LUTs and color corrections. There are no filters on the source, but we can add filters to the scene itself. And this is where scene nesting, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a video all about that, really comes into its own and becomes quite powerful. Because what we're now going to do is set up another scene. And in this scene, we're going to add that scene that we just had. Now, the difference is now we've not got a source in here. We've actually got a scene. So we can edit this scene without affecting this original raw source. It's really, really complicated, but if you watch my video on scene nesting, this will be really, really simple and straightforward. You'll understand fully exactly what I mean. Now, the reason why this is important is because a move source filter, I want to apply that to the scene and not to the original source, that Logitech camera. We can go into this scene here. We can right click it and click on filters. Now, imagine these filters don't exist here. What I'm going to do is click the plus icon. And with that plugin that I mentioned earlier, move transition, we now have some additional filters available, one of which is the move source. And it's this move source transition that is a filter that we're going to control to do that zoom function that I mentioned earlier. So we're first going to click the plus icon and we're going to click to add a move source. We're going to name this move source dash zoom in. So we want to select the source here that we want to use for that. And we can choose all kinds of different settings to customize this. For example, you may want to, when this filter is enabled, have a little delay and then the duration of that. So here, I've just set it to be just less than a second. You could define that to be as fast or as slow as you want. I want to, on my zoom, hold that zoom function, and then I want to be able to reverse it right back in again. So I'm actually having an end delay on this move source filter, which will just hold whatever's happened for three seconds. And I'm also choosing to ease in. Now it's at this point where it gets interesting. We need to define what happens when that filter is activated. In this case, we want to transform the source. We want to make the source bigger because 
because we want to zoom the source. So we need to make sure that transform is checked here and we're going to transform by using different coordinates on the source. So what I'm just going to do here, and you can choose to cover these exact settings if you want, is the, I'm going to set the X axis to be minus 1000 and the Y axis to be minus 426. And all that means is instead of this being sized there, it'll be somewhere in the top corner, somewhere over there off screen, which then means we can resize that source. Now, here's the cool bit. By default, the scale is one because your camera is a one for one scale, meaning it's its normal format. Well, we've set this transition to be twice the scale on the X axis and twice the scale on the Y axis. And what that means is the width is basically doubled and the depth is doubled, which basically zooms to twice the size of the source. We now have a situation where when I activate this filter, it will do that transition that I've asked. This is what you're left with. Now, you may not get it perfectly central like that, but if you use those settings that I've applied, it will be about central. You can just play around with these pixel by pixel if you want to. It's all personal preference. Now, finally, we need to know what happens to get that to zoom back out again and complete that zooming transition. Now, it's the next actions that we're now interested in. What I'm first going to do is I'm going to right click this first filter that I've set up and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm renaming it move source zoom out. So this is the action that will zoom it back out again. We're going to click back into to that first one and now we want the next move to be zoom out function and all this means is when everything's finished on that first filter it will start the second filter which is what we need because it's almost like a loop we want it to do the first filter and then trigger another filter which is this one here so we've got the next move to be the zoom out function and that's what basically gives this quicker zoom out after the three second period which we'll see there. Now I've set that to be a 300 millisecond transition. So the custom duration here on this second zoom function, the filter is 300 mil. It just means it zooms back out again a little bit quicker. But all the settings are the same, the same source, the same delays. I'm not going to hold a delay this time because I want it to happen straight away. And now the final thing is just to control what it is that starts and finishes those filters. Now we know what triggers this second filter. We don't yet know what triggers that first filter. And now this is kind of up to you really, but there's loads of different options here. I'm going with enable. So when the eye icon in front of the filter is enabled. Now, the reason why I'm choosing that is because I'm going to use a stream deck button to turn that filter on, which will make the eye appear, which will then trigger this filter to start. Obviously, I'm showing you here by clicking it, but basically it'll be the stream deck that does that function for you. There's loads of different options for the stop trigger. I'm just saying only stop when the movie's done or when the filter is disabled. Now, it's really important that for this second filter here, the start trigger, so the thing that makes this second filter start is this non, not started automatically, use a hotkey or next move to start this move. Now, it's the next move that is starting this trigger for here because we've set this up in the first one that the next move is to do this next filter and that's what creates the loop. Finally, all we need to do is make sure that the end filter, so the zoom out filter, is the default position of the camera. So to get this, you can just copy all of those settings there, but it should already be by default all of those settings zeroed out, but with a one-to-one -one ratio on the X and Y axis. Now over to the Stream Deck, we're going to program this into the Stream Deck. Now if you're smart, you've already updated to the latest version of the Elgato Stream Deck software, 531 something something something. This basically enables a lot more functions within the Stream Deck, and one of those key functions is on OBS Studio, source visibilities and filter changes is here so you can control the filters from the stream deck you previously could not do that so that's actually quite a significant update from the stream deck now on the stream deck the first technique that i showed can simply use a multi-action switch it will basically have a set of actions here in obs studio that will enable certain sources so the zoomed in source and disable the zoomed out source and then the second set of actions will disable the zoomed in version and enable the zoomed out version so basically it'll switch between the two and it'll simply use this source visibility button here within the OBS studio and then we just have to set this to be the specific scene and the specific source to show it and then we'll also have to have a hide version of it as well so on the first multi-action we would have two of them source visibility source visibility on, we would show one of the filters it's a little bit weird because on that first technique we've just got the same source that is duplicated but one of them's just resized so they actually look the same so as long as you just select the top one on this first action and the bottom one on the second action they will be the two different sources that are in there even though it's the same source. If you want the top one to show it and we want the bottom one to hide it, right click and copy this. And then in the second set of actions, we can right click and paste. We can right click and copy that. We can right click and paste. We've basically got all of the same source, but this time around we want to hide. We want to show that. 
And all that means is when we press that button, it will switch between those two sources. So that's technique one. And just to illustrate how this works, I'm going to press the button now. We're simply switching between the two sources in that same scene. You can see here the eyeball will change between the zoomed in and the zoomed out when I press the button. But it's just not as nice. It kind of works, but then it's just not as nice on the stream deck. Technique two is really, really straightforward because we're simply going from one scene to another scene. So you literally just need a scene switcher from the OBS Studio buttons here. So you just need to drag on the first scene and drag on the second scene. And you basically need to switch between those two different scenes. And now you can see when I switch between those two scenes, because the move transition is set to be smooth, as we discussed for technique two, that still looks quite nice, but it's still very manual and you can't control the pace of it in the same level that you can with technique three. Now with technique three, as I mentioned earlier, we can actually control the filters from the Stream Deck using the OBS Studio filter button. So we would drag one of those buttons on here. In this case, we're going to select the move source zoom in. And remember that will trigger the full loop of those filters that we did earlier. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like now that we've got that filter enabled here. Remember the filter is on the scene, which is here, but the scene is added in this other scene nested as a source. And we've got those filters that have been applied here, the zoom in and the zoom out. So when I press that filter button, it'll do the whole process on its own. I'm going to press it and show you my hands. Zoomed in, it holds, and then it'll snap back out again, and then we're done. Nice and simple. That was three different techniques for doing a zoom in and zoom out function. I love this on my stream. If you found it useful, again, hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Take care.